Picture this, you're at a dinner party surrounded by friends and acquaintances. You're having a great time, enjoying good food and having good conversation. But suddenly someone brings up the topic of smartphones and everyone starts debating and arguing about which one is best. Some people swear by Samsung and others by Apple and still others by Google, but no one mentions LG. It's as if the company never existed and as if its contributions to the smartphone industry are completely forgotten. This is the story of LG, a company that was once a trailblazer in the Android world, but that ultimately became an afterthought. LG was one of the most innovative and daring smartphone makers in the world. At one point, LG was leading the Android market with record-breaking sales and rave reviews. However, LG also faced a slew of problems that ultimately led to its downfall and eventual exit from the smartphone business. Despite its attempts to stay ahead of the game, LG struggled with fierce competition, poor marketing, quality issues, and a lack of focus. In short, LG lost its edge, identity, and most importantly, its customers. LG's smartphone story began in 2006 with the launch of the LG Prada, the first phone with a capacitive touchscreen display a year before the original iPhone hit the market. The LG Prada won several design awards and sold over a million units. It was a sign of LG's ambition and innovation in the smartphone market. LG continued to experiment with different form factors and features such as the LG Chocolate, the LG Beauty, and the LG Arena. They even partnered with Microsoft to produce Windows mobile phones like the LG Optimus 7 and LG Quantum. LG was trying to appeal to different segments and niches of the market, but it wasn't very successful. LG's market share was declining and they were losing money. The company knew it needed to focus on Android and in 2009, they launched their first Android phone, the LG GW620, and followed it up with the LG Optimus series, which included the LG Optimus 1, the Optimus 2X, the Optimus 3D, and the Optimus 4X HD. These phones were aimed at the mid-range and high-end segments and offered some impressive features and specs. For example, the LG Optimus 2X was the first phone to have a dual-core processor, and the LG Optimus 3D was one of the first phones to have a dual camera and glasses-free 3D display. LG also collaborated with Google directly to produce the Nexus 4, the Nexus 5, and the Nexus 5X, which were some of the most popular and well-received Nexus phones ever made. These phones offered a pure Android experience with timely updates, smooth performance, and affordable prices. LG gained a lot of fans and respect from the Android community as a result, and its market share and sales increased. One of the most memorable devices for me, which I still have today, was the LG G Flex. Released in 2013, it was the first smartphone to feature a flexible OLED display. The six inch curved screen was not only an engineering feat, but also had practical benefits such as reducing glare and providing a more immersive viewing experience. LG followed up on the G Flex with the LG G Flex 2, which improved on the original with a smaller form factor, faster processor, and better camera. However, despite being innovative, the LG G Flex series didn't sell well and was ultimately discontinued. LG's smartphone business reached its peak with the launch of the LG G3, the flagship phone of the LG G series. The G3 was a stunning phone with a 5.5 inch, 1440 by 2560 IPS LCD screen, a 13 megapixel camera with laser autofocus and optical image stabilization, a removable 300 milliamp hour battery, and a micro SD card slot. The LG G3 was praised for its design, display, camera, and battery life, and it sold over 10 million units. LG was the third largest smartphone maker in the world behind Samsung and Apple, and it was making profits. However, this was also the beginning of the end for LG. The LG G3 had some flaws, such as overheating, performance issues, and software bugs. LG tried to fix these problems with the LG G4, which also had a leather back option, but it introduced a new problem, the infamous boot loop issue. You see, the LG G4, along with several other LG phones, suffered from a hardware defect that caused them to randomly reboot and get stuck in a loop, rendering them unusable. This was a major blow to LG's reputation and customer satisfaction, and it resulted in several lawsuits and refunds. Then there was the LG G5. That one launched in 2016, and I really liked it. It was LG's first attempt at a modular smartphone. 
The G5 had a removable bottom, which allowed users to swap out different modules, such as a camera grip or a hi-fi audio module. While the concept was promising, the execution was flawed, and the modules were expensive and not very popular. The G5 also suffered from other issues, such as lackluster battery life and a design that was not well received by most consumers. LG also faced increasing competition from other Android phone makers like Huawei, Xiaomi, OnePlus, and Motorola, who offered similar or better features and specs at lower prices. LG's phones were no longer as attractive or unique as they used to be, and they struggled to stand out in the crowded market. LG's market share in sales declined and it started to lose money again in the smartphone sector. LG didn't give up yet though. Soon after, they launched the G6, which had a great 5.7 inch 1440 by 2880 LCD screen with an unusual, at the time, 18 by nine aspect ratio, full IP68 water and dust resistance, and a dual camera with a wide angle lens. Near the end, it felt like LG was just releasing whatever it could to capture people's attention. There was the LG Wing, a phone with a swivel dual display which could rotate and form a T-shape, allowing for multitasking and different use cases. There was also the LG Velvet, a phone with a sleek and elegant design, 6.8 inch display, and a triple camera with raindrop arrangement. Then there was the LG Dual Screen, an accessory that added a second screen to some of its phones like the V50 ThinQ, GX8 ThinQ, and V60 ThinQ. And the ThinQ branding remains a head scratcher for me. LG was not short of creativity and innovation, but it was short of execution and marketing. LG's phones were often plagued by quality issues, software bugs, delayed updates, poor battery life, and mediocre cameras. LG phones were also often overpriced, under-advertised, and poorly distributed. They were overshadowed by Samsung's phones, which had better displays, cameras, performance, and features. The company struggled to maintain a clear and consistent brand image when it came to its smartphone lineup. Unlike its competitors like Samsung and Apple, LG failed to create a distinct identity and reputation for its smartphones, leaving consumers confused and unsure about what the LG brand represented in the smartphone market. In the end, despite its many successes and innovations, LG's smartphone business simply couldn't compete with the likes of Samsung, Apple, and other smartphone manufacturers. With the company's decision to exit the market, the smartphone industry has lost a unique and innovative player that was never afraid to take risks and try new things. But even though LG may no longer be making smartphones, its legacy will live on in the countless devices it produced over the years. From the LG Prada, to the G3, to the LG Wing, LG's smartphones pushed the boundaries of what was possible in the world of mobile technology, inspiring countless other companies and products along the way. So as that dinner party comes to a close, you realize that the story of LG's rise and fall is not just about smartphones, but about innovation, ambition, and risk-taking. It's about the pursuit of excellence, the cost of failure, and the importance of learning from mistakes. It's about the legacy of a company that dared to dream, to create, and to inspire. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.